Now, we also find when we meet with our adults with ADHD that this diagnosis and this history of impairments usually brings with it a mild grief response. Sometimes it's not so mild, by the way. Sometimes the anger and the grieving and the depression are quite extreme and require separate counseling sessions in their own right. We have had adults with ADHD become extraordinarily angry about how could earlier professionals have missed this diagnosis and the regrets they have about the failures that are now irreparable. The marriage is lost, the college degree never attained, the friendships that were lost, the accidents that they had, maybe the injuries. You can't make up for that. Even though you may get diagnosed at 35 or 40 years of age, there's 40 years there of irreparable harms that have mounted up. So it's no surprise that some of our adults are angry or depressed about not having been treated earlier when it might have made a difference in changing their life course. So we will spend some time with these adults, speaking with them about these feelings and helping them unearth them and cope with them, but moving them on to the end stage of a grief reaction, which is acceptance. So that's where we want you because you won't engage treatment if you haven't aggrieved and accepted your disorder. Now, we also, as I've said, want our adults with ADHD to understand what is attributable to ADHD and what may be due to other disorders. Over 80% of adults with ADHD have a second disorder, and over 55% have a third disorder. So the most common pattern is for adults with ADHD to have three disorders. And all of them are going to need to be treated because treating the ADHD won't get rid of the other two. The, by the way, the other two that are most common, apart from the learning disabilities that had to do with school, are anxiety and dysthymia, which is a mild form of major depression. The risk for depression is there, but it's really more anxiety disorders. In fact, we were the first longitudinal study to show that the longer your ADHD went untreated, the greater the likelihood it was going to link up with an anxiety disorder over time. We also want the partners, the spouses, the family members of adults with ADHD to learn about the disorder, to understand its neurobiological underpinning. In order to do, if only one thing, and that is to remove ADHD from the realm of moral judgment. Because that is how most relatives and family members view this undiagnosed patient, as a character flaw, as a personality deficit, and as a moral failing. You could be different if you wanted to be. It's merely a choice that you're making. And we need relatives and partners and spouses to understand this is no choice. This is this disorder. And in doing so, we hope to pull it under the realm of the medical and mental health sciences, and therefore under the realm of compassion and a willingness to assist the adult with ADHD, as opposed to the realm of judgment 